Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, then hi, I'm Manisha. I'm a CT2, that is co trainee year two in the specialty psychiatry here in London. A couple of weeks back, I started a series called PLAP series where I said that in subsequent videos, I'm gonna talk about the entire journey and the documents that are necessary and what is the process. In the first episode of PLAP series, I talked about the PLAP visa, which is the tourist visa. If you are new here and you haven't watched that video, then I'll put up the card link above here and you can go ahead and watch that video. Today is the episode two of PLAP series series which is the IELTS and OAT. So I'm going to talk at length about what is IELTS, what is OAT, what is needed for PLAP, what is needed for GMC registration and what is needed for your tier 2 visa. Uh, without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. So what exactly is PLAP exam and why do you need to give it? So PLAP stands for Professional Linguistic Assessment Board. There are many pathways to attain your GMC license here in the UK. PLAP happens to be the most favorite pathway for international medical graduates to attain their GMC license. PLAP is also the pathway that I chose to get my GMC license here in the UK. Every country has their medical licensing board which grants you license to practice medicine in their country like you have MCI in India, AMC which is Australian Medical Council in Australia, then you've got the licensing pathway of USMLE to attain your license to practice medicine in USA. In a similar way you've got GMC which is the General Medical Council which grants you the license to attain your medical license to be practicing medicine here in the UK. So what are the prerequisites for you to be applying for your PLAP exam? You need your primary medical qualification which is basically your MBBS degree as it's called in various South Asian countries and you need to have a certificate of IELTS or OET. OET is something that's been recently introduced in the last couple of years. I applied for IELTS and I'm going to be talking about my journey about IELTS. I'll also be talking about OET. Unfortunately I don't have personal experience of giving OET. Before I discuss about IELTS and OET I just need to clarify that you need to have a valid English proficiency test that you've cleared before you can even apply for PLAB 1. So so currently GMC recognizes IELTS or OET. You don't have to clear both the exams. You have to only clear one of the two. And yeah, so first we are going to talk about IELTS. So what are the various kinds of IELTS and which one do we doctors need to be aware of? There are basically three kinds of IELTS exam. There's academic, there's general and then there's life skills. As doctors, for us to be applying for PLAB exam, we need to concentrate on the IELTS academic exam. What is the difference between IELTS academic and UKVI IELTS? You must have seen this information on social media about UKVI IELTS and IELTS academic and which one you should be giving. Basically, both the exams work towards you clearing the English proficiency test. That's the main goal of the exam. There's a learning point over here which I wasn't aware of while I was giving my IELTS academic exam. I wanted to bring this up early on in the video. The difference is that after you clear your PLAB 1 and PLAB 2 then you apply for your GMC registration. So for you to be applying for your GMC registration you need to be having a valid IELTS results. At that point your IELTS academic is counted and so is your UKVI IELTS. So if you've given UKVI IELTS instead of IELTS academic that is also counted towards your GMC registration. After GMC registration comes something called the tier 2 visa where you finally apply for your work permit to be working here in the UK. At that point your IELTS academic is not considered, it is not taken into account. You need to be giving UKVI IELTS. So what I would recommend is that if you can then you should be giving UKVI IELTS in the first place instead of giving IELTS academic because you would end up giving two exams. However having said that UKVI IELTS is quite an expensive exam compared to IELTS academic and in case god forbid if you do not pass your IELTS academic and you have to reset your IELTS academic then it's cheaper than you know resetting your UKVI IELTS if that makes any sense. But if you're somebody who's confident and doesn't want to keep sitting these English proficiency tests then you can give your UKVI IELTS in the first place because that will count towards your PLAB exam, that will count towards your GMC registration and that will also count towards you getting your tier 2 visa. IELTS academic is only valid for your PLAB exams and for your GMC registration. For your tier 2 visa you need to be giving your UKVI IELTS. I hope I have clarified that. I wasn't aware of this. If I knew that you know I have to give a separate exam for my visa I would have sat the UKVI IELTS in the first place and I wouldn't have sat for the IELTS academic but yeah I gave the IELTS academic and then when I had to go through my visa process I then got to know that oh my god I have to give another English exam now and then I had to give the UKVI IELTS but yeah if you're somebody who is confident you know that you're going to clear it in one go then give your UKVI IELTS but if you're somebody who's questioning it then I'll probably recommend you give your IELTS academic only because it's cheaper than UKVI IELTS. 
So which of the two IELTS is valid for your PLAB exam, for your GMS registration and for your tier 2 visa? Like I mentioned, your IELTS academic is only valid for your PLAB examination and for your GMC registration. For you to be attaining your tier 2 visa, your work permit to be working here in UK, you have to give the UK VI IELTS ultimately. So validity of the IELTS academic exam is two years. So the cost of the IELTS exam is somewhere between 170 to 195 pounds depending on your location and if you're somebody who's from India, I'm just giving you an exam from India, then it's 14,000 rupees. So what are the various parts of the exam? So there are four parts in the exam, which is the reading, writing, listening and speaking. What is the score that's required for you to pass your IELTS exam for you to be applying for PLAB exam? In every module, you need to have attained at least seven. However, overall, you need to get a score of more than 7.5 which means that you would be needing definitely more than a score of seven in a lot of modules. Having said that, say if you've got overall score of eight or 8.5 and because in some of the modules you've gotten eight or nine, but in a particular module you've gotten 6.5, then you're not eligible to be applying for PLAB exam. You need to get minimum of seven in each module, but your overall score needs to be more than 7.5. How long does it take for the exam results to come back? It takes up to two weeks if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it took 14 working days for the exam results to come back. All right, so my experience with IELTS. Like I said, if I was aware that I had to take UKVI IELTS, then I would have. I wasn't even aware that something called UKVI IELTS existed. I wish I had a YouTube channel of anybody else to, you know, watch and get my information from. So if you're watching this and if you're somebody who's confident, please give UKVI IELTS instead of IELTS Academic because ultimately you would have to sit that exam anyway when you are going to be appearing for your tier two visa. I gave the exam nearly four years back. I I appeared for it in Pune, India. My test dates were two separate dates. So on one day I had speaking which was separate and I had the reading, listening and writing on a separate day. One little tip that I wanted to keep the speaking bit very informal and I wanted to keep it very simple and easy going. So I kept it very conversational. So yeah, it was like a sit down chat with this person rather than thinking that, oh, it's an exam and I need to, you know, like floor this person or come up with these amazing lines or like have top-notch vocabulary so I kept it very light and easy flowing that was a tip I kept in my mind not that anybody said that to me but so yeah if you want to then think of it that way that it's not an exam you're meeting someone for the first time at a restaurant and you're having a chat and keep it easy and keep it light and then my results came out in two weeks and I had the desired results that was needed for me to apply for my PLAB exam all right so now we're going to talk about OET exam I just want to give a quick disclaimer over here that I haven't appeared for OET exam nor do I know anybody in person who has given the OET exam so whatever information i'm going to be sharing here is out there already on the official website so i did a little homework gathered all the information i could about oet so i'm going to be sharing my information based off what's there on the official websites but if somebody who's given their oet can please share the experience down in the comment section below probably that will help someone i'll pin down that comment so other people can read it so what does oet stand for so oet stands for occupational english test if you're somebody who's appeared for amc that is australia Australian Medical Council exams or are preparing for it then you're probably aware of the OET exam this is something that's been newly introduced by GMC and it's valid in the last few years I hadn't heard of OET when I was preparing for IELTS maybe I didn't do my homework properly because I hadn't even heard of UKVI IELTS so yeah what is the major difference between OET and IELTS it's more or less like IELTS you have four modules and they're more or less like IELTS but they do have medicine or medical bits added to it in uh, listening you would hear conversation between a doctor and a patient in writing you would probably write a referral letter basically it's more or less like IELTS like I said but it has got medical bits added to it so which version of OED should you apply for if you're applying for PLAB exam there are more than 12 versions currently available you need to be applying for the medicine bit so make sure you apply for the right section when you're appearing for your PLAB exam all right so what's the validity period of OET exam again OET results are valid for two years so what's the cost of the exams so the cost of the exam is 320 pounds which is roughly 30,000 Indian rupees all right so that's all the information about IELTS and OET I put up a story on my Instagram page asking if you guys have any queries about IELTS or OET to ask them so I'm going to address a few of those questions now between IELTS and OET which is more useful for PLAB both of them work towards you applying for your PLAB exam whether it's IELTS or OET like I mentioned in my video it's just that OED is more 
expensive than IELTS, but both of them work towards you appearing for your PLAB exam. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. How to score a perfect score in reading in the first attempt? All right, so a lot of people say that, you know, take IELTS lightly. I would say otherwise. I did prepare for two weeks. At that point, I wasn't working, so I had all the time in the world. I practiced the British Council example booklet that they had sent. So whatever reading, writing, speaking, listening bits were there and that I practiced that. Please do practice. And the main tip I would give you is that don't just sit and take your time practicing them. Time yourself. I think it's a 60 minutes duration examination, the reading bit. I did know that that is one bit where I'm going to struggle because I found the paragraphs or the essays very complex. So I made sure that, you know, in those 14 days, I knew what my shortcomings were and that was a reading bit. So I used to time myself, do the whole, you know, paragraph or essay, no matter what. And then I would see how much I was scoring. I did not get the desired score when I was practicing for the first few days. And then I figured out, you know, what the trick is. This is something I used. I'm not saying you have to definitely be using this trick to be passing your reading test, but this is what I used was that before I started reading the paragraph, I quickly went through the question. So when I was given the exam booklet, I went through the questions of the reading before starting to read the paragraph. So somehow I had the questions in the back of my head. So while I was reading the paragraphs, I knew what was I looking for. If that makes any sense, if you want to use this trick and practice few of the mocks and if it works for you, then definitely try it because I did finish my reading quite early. And and I had time to revise my reading to see that if I got the answers right or wrong. Online material for IELTS. I'm so sorry, I do not know which would be the right place to look for in any online material. As silly as it sounds, just Google it. Also, there is a Facebook group. I have mentioned this group so many times in my past videos. It's a brilliant group for IMGs or for any PLAV aspirant. I'll put down the link of these Facebook groups down below and you can probably go to the file section of these Facebook groups. Do not access the group from your mobile phone you wouldn't be able to see the file section open it on your desktop or your laptop go to the file section of these groups there are so many mock tests not just for IELTS but also for PLAB so yeah have a look there is there a limit on the number of attempts no there's no limit on number of attempts for IELTS or OET as far as I'm aware do we need to attend a coaching or a self-study enough I didn't attend any coaching for IELTS I think self-study is good enough I think the people who are applying for PLAB exam and who need to sit for aisles are doctors obviously and we've all studied medicine in English and we all know how to speak English so I think you can be practicing it by yourself but if you're somebody who feels underconfident and feels like you need the advice of a coaching center or you need a third person feedback then by all means you can take the option of coaching but personally I didn't take it it's completely your choice. Is IELTS intimidating for people who are insecure about their language skills? I obviously am not in your shoes and I do not know how you feel about it but I did not find the exam intimidating I just thought to myself that like I've studied English I went to an English school I did my schooling in English I did my medical school in English so how hard can this be it's just that obviously we've all lost touch with you know English because it's not really a subject we study post 12th grade so it's been a long time since we've sat and read essays and answered questions based off that so probably a few weeks of practice should be fine but if you're somebody who feels insecure with your language which I sometimes still do because you guys need to remember that English is not my first language either I'm from India uh, my first language is Odia that's my mother tongue and then I can speak Hindi fluently and English is something I still feel a little insecure about in UK because obviously it's not my first language and when I hear people talking here in English they are so fluent they just know the right things to say at the right time I do get what you're saying but given the question is with regards to IELTS exam no it's not really intimidating you will be fine don't worry about it does one need valid IELTS or OET for the work visa even if you have GMC registration for your work visa IELTS or OET is not acceptable you have to give the UK VI IELTS so even if your IELTS is still valid even if your OET is still valid you have to appear for the UK VI IELTS to apply for your work visa but once you've gotten your work visa you don't have to give any more English exams which one is easier? I don't know. I haven't given OET, so I can't comment on OET. And just because I passed 
IELTS in the first attempt. I'm gonna say IELTS is easy. But then I do know that a lot of people have not passed in their first attempt or have taken a couple of attempts, which is completely fine. Don't self-doubt. It's such a subjective thing. I don't know how do they even score it, especially the writing bit and the speaking bit. Like listening and reading, it's like black and white. Either you get it right or you get it wrong. So don't be too hard on yourself. It'll be fine. I don't know which one is easier. Really can't comment on that. Can we apply before graduation? I would say please don't apply before graduation just because of the validity period that the exam results are only valid for two years and in case you give it quite early on and by then you've not finished your PLAB attempts and your IELTS results have expired you have to resit the exam again and god forbid you don't pass it again then you know your most recent exam results are valid so please wait for you to get your primary medical qualification in hand before you sit for your IELTS exam or you know time it in a way that if you're planning on giving your PLAB exam somewhere say in June then you should probably be sitting your IELTS exam already by now or if you're planning to give it in November then you give the IELTS exam somewhere around July. Time it in a way that your IELTS results come out in two weeks and then you would have time to apply for your PLAB exam. Having said that I am very much aware that the PLAB seats have literally like run out and a lot of people are struggling finding a slot to give the PLAB exam. It is a rough year just because a lot of exams were cancelled last year and a lot of slots were decreased but yeah just time it in a way that you've got enough time to apply for your PLAB exam by the time your IELTS results come out but please don't give your IELTS exam while you're doing your medical school or prior to your graduation wait to graduate and then give it only because of the validity period I'm in second year should I start IELTS preparation now please do not please concentrate on your medical school clear your medical school you don't need three four years to prepare for IELTS exam finish off your medical school do your internship and probably during that duration you can plan your plan pathway time period to prepare for OET if one currently has a full-time job I'm assuming OET is similar like IELTS again it depends on a lot of things how confident do you feel in your language how much time do you have after you finish a whole day's work when do you plan on sitting the PLAB exam I wasn't working I had all the time in the world like I mentioned so I prepared for two weeks I'm not saying everybody needs to just prepare for two weeks so uh, depends on a lot of things sorry can't put a number on that is there a specific IELTS for PLAB aspirants yeah like I mentioned you need to appear for IELTS academic is there any benefit of scoring high in OET do A or B hold equal opportunity for FY2 jobs in UK no it doesn't matter how much you score in your IELTS exam or OET exam when you're applying for your jobs literally everybody is at the same level it doesn't matter if I am an Indian citizen do I have to give IELTS only in in India. No, you can give IELTS wherever you want to. You can even come and give IELTS over here in UK, but I don't understand why do you have to travel elsewhere to be giving the exam. If you've got the option of giving it in your home country, in your own city, just, just give it there. But then if you want to travel and give it elsewhere, no one's stopping you. Hey, if I've given UKVI IELTS, will it work for both PLAB exam and the visa? Yes, you're absolutely right. UKVI IELTS is the only English proficiency exam result that is required for your work purpose visa which is your tier 2 visa and also works for PLAB and for GMC registration. Is Cambridge series enough or do I do more? I do not know what is Cambridge series but going by the name I'm assuming it's some English mock test series kind of a thing. I mean the more mocks you do the more you practice do as many as possible. How to prepare for IELTS? What band is required for practicing medicine in UK? Like I mentioned practice 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 lots of times. Another tip that I would give for speaking is that I timed myself sometimes I would place a camera and record myself speaking and then play back the video and see like whether I was using a lot of ums mm's, and you know not finishing off my sentences and things like that uh, sometimes I asked Dean so I was staying with him and so I would ask him to give me a random topic and time me and and I would after 11 or 13 minutes ask for his feedback just keep practicing or practice in front of the mirror that's the best way to practice that's how I used to practice for all my debates when I was in school make sure that if you've started a sentence finish it so yeah little things like that practice it practice literally practice 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 that's all I can say I did not practice much of listening or writing but I did practice lots and lots of reading and speaking but then I knew those were my weak points so you need to know what your shortcomings
shortcomings are and focus a lot on that. So you need a score of 7.5 overall and a score of 7 in each module. Yeah, so that's what is required for you to be applying for PLAB exam. And after you apply for your PLAB exam, then you apply for your GMC registration. And then when you apply for your tier 2 visa, only UK VI IELTS is accepted. And when you then appear for your UK VI IELTS, you only need a band 4 to be applying for the visa because by then you cleared your PLAB and GMC registration and everything. Only need band 4 to be then be granted your work permit visa. So yeah, we've reached the end of the video. That's all the information about IELTS and OET. In the next episode, which is episode 3 of PLAB series, I'll be talking about PLAB 1 and PLAB 2. I hope you found it informative. If you did, then do give it a big thumbs up and if you have any other queries about IELTS or OET please do drop the comments down below in the comment section and i hope you're keeping safe and looking after yourself and your loved ones and i'll see you in the next one bye Mwah.